Hey everybody, it's time for another presidential political shift. This time we've got 2016 to 2020, and it's the least populous county in each state. I previously looked at the most populous county in each state. This time we're going to go in the complete opposite direction. We're going to look at the shifts in the counties that have few people. Now, is this the most useful thing in the world? No, it's not. But it is fun to take a look at some different metrics. If you do want to skip ahead to the map, there will be a link down below in the description. And a couple of things to mention. Some states have very few counties. Some states have a ton of counties. So that means some of these are going to be populated counties, but most of them are going to be sparsely populated. And while most of these are red counties, there are a few counties, big and small. They have different demographics, and they happen to be purple or blue counties. So having said all that, we don't need to get into the background about these two elections. So let's get to the spreadsheet. We've got the counties in the first column. Then we've got the 2016 Democratic vote. That is Hillary Clinton. Then we've got the 2016 Republican vote. That's Donald Trump. Then we jump ahead four years. We've got the 2020 Democratic vote. That's Joe Biden. Then it's the 2020 Republican vote. Donald Trump. The next column are the Democratic shifts between those two elections, followed by the Republican shifts. And the last column is the net change between the two parties between the two elections. And I've got the usual shading. The darkest colors are 10 or more points. The lightest colors are under five point shifts. So three levels of shading. Let's go ahead and get started. And to make it simple, I took all this data from Wikipedia. It is possible an error could have slipped through. And it's also possible that I could butcher the pronunciation of a couple of these counties. But either way, let's get started here. We've got Green County, Alabama in 2016. Hillary Clinton won that county with 82.2. Donald Trump, he only got 17.2. Four years later, Joe Biden ticked down slightly to 81.3. Trump slightly improved to 18.3. That's a net loss of 0.9 for the Democrats, a net gain of 1.1 for the Republicans, and a total net shift of 2% away from the Democrats. Democrats and toward the Republicans. So that's how this works. Let's quickly go through the rest of these states. Next, we've got Yakutat, Alaska. They have boroughs, not counties, but that shifted 1% toward the Democrats. Greenlee, Arizona, that went 9.6 toward the Republicans. Calhoun, Arkansas, that cracked double digits, 12.6 toward the Republicans. Alpine County, California, that went in the opposite direction, 11.7 toward the Democrats. San Juan County, Colorado, that had an even bigger shift toward the Democrats of 15.1. Wyndham County, Connecticut, 3.5% toward the Democrats. Kent County, Delaware, 9% toward the Democrats. Liberty County, Florida, 32 toward the Republicans. Talaferro County, Georgia, very little change there, only two-tenths of a percent toward the Republicans. Kalawa, Hawaii, that had the biggest shift out of all the counties. Not a lot of people there, but it lurched hard toward the Democrats by 26.6. Clark County, Idaho, that had the biggest shift toward the Republicans by 15.6. Hardin County, Illinois, both parties gained 1.2, so there is no net change whatsoever. Ohio County, Indiana, great name, it shifted 2.9 toward the Republicans. Adams County, Iowa, also toward the Republicans by 4.1. Greeley County, Kansas, same direction and the same shift of 4.1. Robertson County, Kentucky, and even 2% toward the GOP. Tents of Parish, Louisiana, small change, 0.8 toward the right. Piscataquis County, Maine, small red shift of 1.3. We've got another Kent County, this time in Maryland, that went 4.3 toward the Democrats. Nantucket, Massachusetts, that's 10.9 toward the Democrats. Keweenaw County, Michigan, a healthy blue shift of 7.8. Traverse County, Minnesota, 4.1 toward the GOP. Issaquina County, Mississippi, that went 7% toward the Republicans. Worth County, Missouri, 1.1 toward the Republicans. Petroleum County, Montana, that went 2.6 toward the Democrats. Arthur County, Nebraska, that's back toward the right by a small 0.6. Same direction in Esmeralda County, Nevada by 4.5. Now we've got some shifts toward the Democrats. First in Coos County, New Hampshire, 3%. Salem County, New Jersey, 2.2. Hardin County, New Mexico, 1.7. And Hamilton County, New York, 4.4. And now we go back toward the Republicans in Terrell County, North Carolina at 1.1. Slope County, North Dakota, 4.5. Vinton County, Ohio, that hit a decent shift of 9%. And in Cimarron County, Oklahoma by 2.7. In Oregon, Wheeler County, they went toward the left by 2.1. Cameron County, Pennsylvania, another blue shift of 1.3, also in Bristol County, Rhode Island by 7. But in Allendale, South Carolina, that shifted toward the Republicans by 
Jones County, South Dakota, tiny change there, two tenths of a percent toward the Democrats. Pickett County, Tennessee, six and a half toward the Republicans. Loving County, Texas, 1.8, also toward the Republicans. Daggett County, Utah, again toward the Republicans by eight and a half. Essex County, Vermont, that went toward the Democrats by five and a half. Highland County, Virginia, 1.8 toward the Republicans. Garfield County, Washington, similar shift of two percent toward the GOP. Ward County, West Virginia, slight blue shift of two tenths of a percent. Menominee County, Wisconsin, 8.3 toward the Democrats. And the last county is Niobrara County, Wyoming, and that went two and a half toward the Democrats. So that's it. That's all of them. And this wouldn't be complete if we didn't take all this data, put it on a map. So let's take a look at that. Here it is. The states are shaded according to how that least populous county shifted. And we've got similar shading. The darkest colors are 10 or more points. This time, the very lightest colors, those are under one point shifts. Those would be the tilt margins. So we've got four levels of shading. And what are the takeaways? from this map. Well, again, the thing to keep in mind is some of these counties have different demographics. They might misrepresent the rest of the state, and some of these counties aren't that small. They might be in a state that doesn't have very many counties. But other than that, the map actually looks similar to how we would expect the states to vote. Of course, there are exceptions, but the West Coast, except for Washington, those are blue. Most of the Northeast, that's blue as well. Illinois had no change whatsoever. But a lot of the South, the Great Plains, parts of the Midwest, those shifted toward the Republicans. But it's true we would not expect a place like West Virginia to shift toward the Democrats or Washington to shift toward the Republicans. And there's some other states here that might be misleading, but these aren't supposed to be the most important shifts in the world. It's more of a trivial fun fact to see which way the low populations have shifted during these four years. It also might be fun to compare this to how the most populous counties shifted. Take a look at that video if you'd like. But most of the large populated counties did shift toward the Democrats. There's a few notable exceptions. Just like on this map, we normally think of the rural counties as being red. A lot of them are overwhelmingly so, but there's degrees to how red or blue these counties are. In between these two elections, a lot of the red counties did get a little bit redder, but a bunch more did shift slightly back toward the Democrats. It does go to show there's a lot of political polarization out there. One other thing is the third party vote share from 2016 to 2020. It did drop off. That could be another factor into some of these shifts. So as as always, you could probably find a lot more in the data. I think you could draw some of your own conclusions, but this is a great looking map. I think it's pretty fun to see where these low populations have shifted. A lot of them are counties that nobody's ever heard of, nobody's ever going to visit, but there are people there, and this is the way they shifted between 2016 and 2020. We'll see what happens next time, but let me know in the comments what do you think about any of the shifts in any of these counties, in any of these states, any surprises, any other takeaways. Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.